All right, how's everybody doing today? Good. So uh, the title of this presentation is, is Adventures with the Canvas REST API. Um, so mostly they're my adventures, and, and I want to translate how adventurous it was to get into this. So what we're going to cover today is uh, uh, maybe a rehash for some of you what the Canvas REST API is. We'll talk a little bit about the uh, Ruby scripting language just briefly, um, how to set it up for your environment, and then we're going to do some awesome Canvas REST API demos. Okay, so just a little bit more about me. Um, I, I do work for Mesa Community College, which is within a consortium of 10 colleges within the Maricopa system. So uh, our institution has a policy of a course, a Canvas course for every section that is taught, and instructors really just have to publish their course and then all the enrollments are in there. And so our institution has the highest enrollments out of all the other ones, and so um, I get a lot of uh, phone calls about how to get things done. I mostly work the, with the instructors and how to get their multimedia presentations integrated with their Canvas course and then just overall support. So a um, little bit about me, um, I'm kind of a ones and zeros type of a person, and I hope that doesn't intimidate anyone in here. Um, so my background is I'm a computer scientist, and uh, I did that, um, took me a long time to graduate, and then after I got done, I've actually been working in instructional programming for over 10 years. I was going to school full time at the same time, and after I got my bachelor's degree, um, I kind of missed going to school, and so I went back and decided that I was going to do educational technology. Um, and I love, love, love sitting on both sides of the equation, being a ones and zeros type of guy and being an instructional designer, too. It really helps me to be able to put myself in the role of an instructor. Um, so when I got my bachelor's, this is kind of how I felt, because um, Kip Dynamite's awesome, right? Um, and just that little bit of ed tech um, masters kind of pushed me to this type of a person. <laughs> Um, so I want to find out a little bit about you. So uh, raise your hand if you're brand new to Canvas. Okay, a few of you. Um, raise your hand if you're on the instructional side. Good deal. Um, admin support. Great. Okay, so um, those of you who are in the instructor side, I actually have a demo that's especially for you. Um, and I really want to make this about you and make you guys awesome too. So just a little bit of geeky terminology here. Um, REST actually stands for Re Representational State Transfer. And really all you need to know about that is uh, it's about reading and or writing data stored in Canvas. And so I've got a little uh, diagram here of a typical multi-tiered web application. And down there at the bottom, you see what's known as the data stored source or the data store. And all of this comprises um, the application framework called Ruby on Rails. That's what Canvas is written. It's a Rails app. And uh, down here at the, at the uh, or up here at the top, the user interface is where we all see it. So basically the, uh, the, the web browser. And people who are really interested in learning how things are built and, and want to do some scrupulous things, they like to see, okay, how's the data, you know, how do you get access to the data? And that's what the Canvas API does. It's your data and you have access to it through the REST API, which kind of transcends all these um, layers here, okay? So a little bit about Ruby. It's actually the development application programming language for Ruby. And uh, if you're worried about any of the links that I have in here, the slide presentation handout is in the Instructure course for InstructureCon, um, and all the code examples that I'm going to give you too. Okay. Um, so how you set up Ruby on your own platform? Well, if you're a Macintosh user, it comes with Ruby by default, and that's called the System Ruby. And through my adventures, and, and I may be wrong on this, uh, the my particular preference is to have a version that's a little bit greater than that. In fact, if you're actually doing a build of uh, Canvas now on your own server, you actually re it's actually required to use Ruby 1.9x. And uh, so for your own personal uh, uh, installation, if you're a Mac user, to upgrade to another version, I like to use a tool called the Ruby Version Manager, and I'm going to show you a little bit about that. Um, if you're a Windows user, um, you can just go to this website, rubyinstaller.org, and if you have... Uh, conflicts of interest with your network admin about installing your own software, you can actually run Ruby from your thumb drive. So you just plug it into any computer and make sure that you go to wherever your Canvas or your Ruby installation is and you can run commands in Ruby. Don't even have to bother anybody. I like that about that. Okay, so again for Macintosh, um, the prerequisites for using it is you, it's, you have to have um, some installations of some software. Um, the command line development tools for OS X, and then some series of, of um, software. Um, Macports is an application that'll take care of that for you. 
and you have to have a little bit of uh, familiarity with the terminal application. And I've actually given you a shell script for installation if you have the ability to do this on your own computer. So I'm just going to demo that for you here real quick. And pray that the demo gods are with us here. Okay, so. And what this does is it escalates you to, you have, basically have to be an admin on your own machine. And I'm not going to let it go through the whole thing, but what it's going to do, it's actually going to go out and get all the code that you need or the software that you need for your particular um, version of Ruby that you're trying to get here. And I've set this to be Ruby 1.9.3, and it's going to be the latest build for that. And I'm not, just, I'm not going to show the, the rest of that for you. Um, when we get back to here, we're going to see that. So let me just switch back to the presentation here. And uh, it's a little geeky on that end. Um, for Windows, there's really no prerequisites. You just install Ruby. And like I said, you can even run Ruby from, from a USB drive or from a separate uh, um, data storage. Okay? So just kind of moving through here real quickly because I want to get to the demos. All these demos scripts are what are known as console applications. So there's no GUI. There's no button that says, hey, make this go. You have to basically be familiar with opening up the command prompt in Windows or the terminal application and knowing what to type in. Okay? Um, the other part of this is Ruby by itself is not enough to make these examples work. And so Ruby has a uh, method of sharing code called gems. And really what a gem is, it's a contained shareable application resource. Um, and the one that I like to use for these uh, demonstrations is what's known as REST client. And the installation, how to get that, the web address is right there. Um, if you want to know how to use every aspect details on REST client, there's the documentation for it. Um, and really, it took a while for me to translate some of the things that you see on the API page for Canvas, some of those calls that you make. Um, it says curl, and that's an application that basically just does a basic web um, request for information. Um, so for, as far as REST client usage goes, um, this will be a review for some of you, um, in a traditional um, web application, um, you have a client. So it, this be a web browser or some other program like curl. And what it does is it makes a request okay, to some kind of a server. In this case, this is the Canvas Rails app. And then that server returns back a response. And the response it sends back is a data format known as JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. What that is is a computer and human readable uh, uh, construct that we can understand as humans, but it also can be parsed by other application programming languages like Ruby. Okay? Um, as far as those requests uh, are categorized, there's four basic ones, um, get, post, put, and delete. And the only reason I put that up there is if you're perusing the uh, Canvas API website right there, you're going to see which type of requests you need to make in order to get the data and the performance and the, the type of behavior that you want. Okay. Um, just a little bit of review here. Um, JSON is that JavaScript object notation. And this is a basic example of what that might look like. And so it's kind of this bracket and bracket, and in between is all the information you want, name, key value pairs. And in terms of getting the information you want, you just basically say, well, I want this particular value based on this key, and you can get that information in there. So if I wanted to get a account name in this particular example, you would see new account name come back from your uh, Ruby code, okay? And in terms of uh, basic REST client usage example, um, if you're new to programming, uh, this might be a little bit uh, unwieldy for you, but basically it's like algebra. Whatever you use on the right-hand side of the equal sign gets set to the left-hand side. And so most, if not all, of the uh, APIs return some sort of response, at least a, hey, I worked kind of response. Um, but others actually return data, and so you want to capture that. And so the response on the left-hand side is really what you're going to be interested in. If you know other programming languages and you want to uh, learn Ruby, here's some uh, uh, resources that I found when I was helping uh, put this together. Um, for me, uh, my undergraduate, I was a C++ and Java guy, and it's always fun to kind of learn new languages to see how they differ. Um, 
The other part of this is uh, when you're using these scripts, you're gonna find some things that are gonna be more or less reusable. And so I like to use what are called configuration files. So if you've ever downloaded the uh, source code for Canvas, you're gonna see a bunch of these. And what they do is they store information about how to configure your particular instance of, of Canvas. In this case, I like to use it um, to configure other things. So um, if you're interested in what uh, YAML stands for, it's actually one of those geeky um, recursive uh, 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 acronyms, so you can keep saying this forever and ever and ever and never get to the end of it, okay? And that's basically what my configuration files look like. And so what I'd like to do is, if I wanted to use this, say, on another instance of Canvas, and um, I'd like to save it in a name key value pair, and then you're also going to need what's called an API key, and I'm going to show you how to get that, okay? So uh, are we good so far? All right, let's get our hands dirty. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is show you there's two types of uh, access to the API that you're going to see here. So a lot of these are going to be if you have access to Canvas as an admin. In our particular um, instance of, of Canvas, um, we have a sub-account for every campus. And so every sub-account, every campus has an admin for that sub-account. And so uh, what uh, I decided that I was going to do one time is just to see, okay, how many of our published courses have certain information, things about that, okay? And so this is the endpoint. Um, you would see this on the documentation for the uh, Canvas API. And the uh, REST client code translation is we want to capture the response based on that endpoint URL. And we also have to pass it that auth token, okay? So let me um, switch out of here. And in order for this to work, okay, so you saw that earlier um, script just completed. And in order to make sure that I'm in the correct version of Ruby, I've got to type RVM use 1.9.3, okay? And there you see the version that I'm using right here. I'm gonna clear up my console so that you can see what this looks like. And I'm gonna show you, um, well, first of all, I, in order for, the, for this to work the right way, I'm gonna actually have to talk to a Canvas account that has some significant numbers of users. So I need to actually sign in here. I'm gonna do the best I possibly can with my screen space here. Um, I might actually have to unplug this in order for this to work. Okay, so this is my admin account and I apologize, I'm gonna to have to unplug this briefly just to get to the, the settings panel here. Okay. All right here, so I'm in my admin account, I'm gonna scroll down here, and here are the approved integrations I've already done. Um, we're using the new roll call instance in, or the uh, attendance feature, and so that's what is here. I actually need to generate what's called a new access token. And another word of warning about these, these auth tokens, and you might have heard this before, um, if someone has enough knowledge and they know your auth token, they can essentially be you and do something with your auth token. So a good rule of thumb is don't keep these stored around in plain text files like I do, um, <laughs> just for testing. And always expire them within a reasonable amount of time. So if someone does happen to, to capture it, then that won't work, okay? So I'm actually gonna put in, this is for an InstructureCon demo, and I don't think anyone's gonna do anything weird with this tomorrow, so I'm gonna expire it then. Scroll down and generate this. And I see if I can move this over so I can see everything here. So this gobbledygook right here, let me just make this a little bit bigger so I can actually copy this in its entirety is my auth token. So I'm gonna copy that and here is my text editor of choice and here is my auth token API key so I'm just gonna paste over that. Okay, And what this does is it actually goes into our particular instance of Canvas and it targets a sub-account within our sub-account. So this actually happens to be the department that I teach for. And the reason I'm choosing this particular sub-account is because there's a reasonable amount of courses in here. If I were to set this at our main sub-account, we wouldn't get done with this demo by the time the, the presentation ends, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And I'm gonna go over to my terminal and I'm gonna type the Ruby command course IDs example. And you have to have an uh, internet connection order for this to work because this is uh, going out to the cloud. 
And what this is doing, it kind of takes a while for it to spin up, is basically says, all right, I see this many courses in this account, and I'm getting all the information in chunks of 50 courses at a time. And if you were to go to the Canvas API website, it would show you what the JSON structure of a course looks like. Okay, so um, hopefully it won't get the, uh, it won't take too long to get to the end of 300 courses, 371. But really what all this does is gonna go out and it's gonna get the ID of each course and it's gonna write it out to a text file. Okay, now I could have done some other things with it. I could have gone in and say, okay, who's the instructors in this course or the, the students in this course? But really what I'm doing is I'm gonna save this list of course IDs so I may could do something else with another script, like maybe read those course IDs in and do something with those courses, um, something, something maybe in the future. Okay, so we've got about uh, 71 more to go. Okay, so found 371 courses in the published state. Let me go and find my directory where the script lived. And there are the course IDs. Okay, so like I said, I could take this text file, read it back in, and do some other things. Now, in my particular experience with this, I actually wanted to find out, okay, what are the email addresses of all the instructors who actually have published courses? And potentially I could build a distribution list based off of that. Okay, until Instructure and Canvas builds that kind of feature into their admin console, um, this becomes a useful tool for us. Okay. Okay, so let me get back to here, and we're going to do another demo here. Okay, doing a calendar event. Okay, this is another one that requires an admin token. Okay, so. What I'm going to actually do for this one, um, for this one you actually need to pass in some parameters, okay? And all this is is a hash that contains each one of these things. In this particular um, example here, I'm actually wanted to put in maybe take those courses and say, well, you know, campus is going to be closed on Independence Day, so as an admin, I want to put that in there so students know that they shouldn't come to campus, all right. So this is an example where I could take all those course IDs and actually access the calendar of that particular course and do that maybe ahead of time for all the instructors so that they know that, hey, maybe grades are due by a particular point in time. Okay. So let me show you what this one is actually going to do. And for this one, I'm actually going to use a local installation of Canvas. Okay. So I'm going to sign in with my admin account here on my local instance, and this is going to be another challenge here because I can't see my settings panel. So um, just so you know that I'm not doing too many things behind the scenes here, I'm actually going up to the upper left-hand corner clicking on settings, and let me plug this back in. Okay, so this is my local Canvas install, and so again, I'm going to go down to generating a new access token, and with this particular example, I'm going to be relatively safe because this server is actually only running on this machine, so good luck if you actually capture this token. It's not going to do anything. Okay, so this is again an Instructure Con demo, and I'm going to go ahead and expire it for tomorrow. Generate that token. Let's see if I can get the whole thing in here. Copy that. Switch over to my text editor. And this is um, where I have my configuration file. Let me go ahead and paste it where my API key needs to go. Okay. And then I'm going to log out of my admin account here and go back in under a instructor account. Okay, so to get to the login, I actually have to go back to the settings upper right hand corner again. Apologize for doing that. Log out. And everything here should be able to be done. Okay, so I'm going to sign in here as Professor Awesome. And Professor Awesome has three courses, and um, I'm just going to use American History as the example here. Now, if you've ever played with Canvas enough, you'll see a lot of URLs that have numbers after them. For the uh, basic uh, usage, you need the ID of a course that's going to be at the end of the URL when you sign in. So I'm going to capture this one. This is three. And I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my editor here. And that's the course ID that I want to use. 
And let me go ahead, and I've got to go over here and access the calendar for this particular course. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here, click on settings, and my calendar is on the other side of the page. So I've got to click on that. Apologize once more. Okay, so this is a date for the for July 4th, so I'm going to go ahead and switch to that month so we can actually refresh this and see what happens here. Okay, so I'm going to go back to here, clear my console out, so you can see how this works. So Ruby calendar item create. Creating new calendar item. Then it points out, or it puts out a message that says it's done. So let's go see what happens here. Go ahead and just refresh my page. There it is. Independence Day campus closed. Okay, and I could uh, change the date on this configuration file to be any other date as long as it's in that particular format. Um, if you're interested on what kind of date format it, you, you want, it's actually in the comments for this particular configuration file. If you have another date in mind, okay. So uh, one more here. And this will be the last demo that I have time to show you, is uh, archiving and deleting conversations. So at our particular institution, we have small enrollments. So I disclaimer on, on this one, I don't know how well this works for enrollments over 25 or 30. Okay, So if you happen to teach a course of 200 students, use this at your own risk. Um, I'd actually like to see what happens when you do this. I just don't have a particular <laughs> data set to compare it against. Um, <laughs> So that's particular, this is the, the way that you would do this. And this is one where is a put request. That's how it looks. And so what it needs is an array of, of uh, conversation IDs. And so what this particular um, example does is it, it queries an instructor account, finds all the conversations that are in that instructor account, and puts them in the archive state. I actually um, supported an instructor who lamented the fact that every semester she had to go in and each uh, click each conversation, put it in the archive state. So let's go here and see how that looks. Okay, so for this one to work, I need to be an instructor. So, um, which means I actually need to go in and generate an, uh, a key on the instructor side. So let me go ahead and pull this out. Same little hand waving exercise here, apologize. Okay, so here I am logged in as Professor Awesome. Wait for this to come back up, all right? So um, let me go in here and generate my access token. StructureCon demo and expire it tomorrow, just like before. And because this is an instructor account, I, I really want to be careful with this, not let it out. Not that an admin would be any less useful to somebody who wants to do something malicious here. Let me go ahead and select all of that. that, go to my text editor, here's my configuration file. This is for a single user in the, actually this would work for a student too because it's at the user level, not the admin, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And just to show you how this works, let me go back up here, let me see if I can get to my inbox, and of course that's on the right hand side one more time. Okay, so this particular instructor has got probably about six conversations going here. And just wanted to show them the before state so you can actually see that this does work. So I'm going to go back to my console here and Ruby Conversations Archive. So this one does three things. It gets the conversations, actually does two things. It gets all of the conversation IDs packages them up, puts them in the parameters hash, and puts them in the archive state. Okay, this one says it's done. Let's go see what happened. Go ahead and just refresh this. No more conversation messages. Okay, just to verify that they're still there, I can go, should go to the archive state, and I can actually pull them out 
and put them in the arch unarchived state. And this particular script, it doesn't care how many are there. It just says, okay, what are all the conversations? Go ahead and archive them for me. Okay? So that was the last demo that I had. Um, so if some of the future status of this, if I were to take this anywhere else, maybe I'd actually develop a real web application so there's a GUI and basically run as kind of a side application to Canvas until Instructure actually implements some of these features that these scripts do. Okay. And then until then, maybe translating some more of those uh, uh, REST API calls into that REST client code. Um, curl, for the most part, would work if you know what to type in. Um, I kind of had a, a, a tough time translating those from um, the API documentation into what REST client needs. And I want to go ahead and thank all the instructor people on the forums for helping me out because I kind of felt like a doofus sometimes, but they, they helped me feel really awesome. So <laughs> just wanted to go ahead and put a plug in for that. Okay. And that's basically it. So thanks, and I guess I have maybe three minutes for a question. <laughs> yes. Oh, so the question is, um, what is the difference between doing a local install and a test instance? Uh, just your experience um, doing development and testing on one versus, like why you would make the choice to do it locally versus... Okay, so the question is, why use a local versus a... Okay, well, for one thing, the, uh, the local, I, I wanted to make sure I was FERPA compliant to actually put student names up on the screen for the whole world to see. Um, secondly, if I was using a real instance of Canvas, um, then I would have a larger data set. Um, Honestly, it took me about 45 minutes to put all those conversation messages in the inboxes of those demo students, and I'm like, I don't want to do this for five hours today just so I can show you how it works on a large implementation. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. So you can do local development and then test it out. Right, right. And what I actually do recommend is that if you're a cloud customer, everybody has a test instance uh, that has their data in there. And so that shouldn't affect anybody in the real instance of Canvas. You go ahead and test your, your scripts out on that, and that resets every week. So if you do break something, um, your work is covered up. How do you manage tokens if you have many instances of Canvas and you want to share that with many instructors, for example, that want to use it? Okay, so the question is, how do you share this work with instructors who may want to use this? Yeah. Okay. Um, I have not put this in the hand of instructors yet. Um, I wouldn't trust them to keep their tokens safe. Um, but just make sure that they have the same disclaimer is that if they if someone has their token and they have enough knowledge They can be them. So just be ultra ultra careful about how you share that information But they would have to each generate their own token Correct every user would have their own off token. It just depends on what type of user they are So instructor versus admin. Okay, one more question Okay, so the question is, if you wanted to do something repeatedly, um, for that one example, that was one request sent to the server for one course, okay? So if you had 100 courses, you'd have to have a list of IDs for all those courses, and in programming terms, you would need a looping structure in order to make that request over and over again, okay? How, how would you handle the auth tokens in that instance? Uh, the auth token, the question is, how would I handle the auth tokens in the calendar creation tool, or? In, in, in that instance, if you, if you want to do it over Okay, well, here's how I would do it just to be safe and secure. Since I'm the admin, I have control over whether the access token exists. So I would go ahead and do the work and then delete my access token. Okay, one, more, one last question. Uh, maybe just something you're considering for the future, but um, if you're using uh, the Ruby curl methods, have you ever considered um, Rails actively sourced since the endpoint for uh, Canvas is RESTful? Okay. Yes, the, the, the question is, is there other options besides REST client? And yes, there is. Um, your particular example of using the, the, that particular software stack for the a Rails app, um, I haven't got that far yet. Um, so to further answer your question, I actually did start this out by using the uh, curl bindings for Ruby. And just the setup to share it was so awful because you actually need binaries for the Ruby or for the curl call. And that varies by platform. And REST client is actually a more portable method of doing that. Okay, All right, thank you.